Okay, so we're going to solve by substitution this nonlinear system. Okay, so we're going to go over a couple here, solving using substitution. Um, what we want to do is we want to solve one of the equations. Right, solve one of these equations uh, for x or y. Okay, so in general, you solve one of these equations for x or y. Now, if you think about up here, solving this for x in particular might be a little complicated. All right, down here we could solve for x in terms of y. All right, we could solve for y in terms of x. Now, I'm saying solve one of the equations for x or y, but for us, a lot of times, what we're going to do almost all the time is we're going to solve for y. Okay, so keep that in mind. So you you have options here. Uh, I can't be so rigid that say you're always going to do one thing. Uh, here in general, we're going to generally be solving for y. So let's do that. We could choose to solve the top equation for y or the bottom equation for y. Um, look, uh, analyze a little bit first and say, would I rather solve this equation for y or this one for y? All right, I'm picking equation uh, here, right? The x plus y equals 4. So we do that. So over here, we're going to solve for y, all right? So a little implies if I solve for y, I'm going to subtract the x. That means y is equal to negative x plus 4, all right? So I solve that equation for y, and there's kind of the first step, okay? Now, sub into the other equation. All right, no different than when we did the substitution with two lines. Here we have a line, here we have a quadratic. So you sub into the other equation. Okay, so now we take what y is, which is negative x plus 4, right? And we replace all that, right? Right here, negative x plus 4, we replace all that right here. Okay, that's subbing into the other equation. So what's that look like? Make sure you be careful here. This is x squared plus x, now minus y. And see how I put this in parentheses? All right, that's generally, generally a good idea. That way, when you replace here y with the parentheses, you're going to distribute the negative correctly. All right, if you just write down negative x plus 4, that's not correct. Okay, we got to make sure that we're going to be distributing the negative. Okay, so now we do that. x squared, x plus x minus negative x, so that's another plus x, minus 4, distribute, equals negative 1. Okay. Now we solve. Okay, now this, I'm saying solve. It's a matter of what does the equation that you have look like, okay? So depending on what's left, you have to have the technique to solve it, and you do. This is a quadratic equation. So we have a couple options when solving a quadra quadratic equation. We could factor it. We might take square roots. We might complete the square. We might use a quadratic formula. My first goal is going to be try to factor it. That's usually the easiest way to first try. So here we have x squared. If we're going to factor, we need to get everything on one side equal to 0, like terms. Add the 1 over. Now, what are factors of 3 that subtract to 2? Factors of 3 that subtract to 2 works. Factors of 3 that subtract to 2, 3 and 1. Signs here, that means the signs are different, minus. That goes with the bigger number. Plus here, minus here. That means x plus 3 equals 0. Or x minus 1 equals 0, so we have x equals negative 3, x equals 1. But now we, we're finding the point that goes, right? Negative 3 goes with what? It has a y-coordinate, right? This is coordinates we got to find, the x and y that work. So in order to do that, we got to go back now and plug in x being negative 3 to one of our original equations, or anywhere there's a relationship between x and y. Now. I could go back and plug in negative 3 for x here, 
I could plug in negative 3 here and negative 3 here and solve for y. I could do that. I can plug in negative 3 here and then find out what y is. All right? To me, the best place, though, is over here where you've already solved for y. Right? I don't have to do any algebra. All I do, do is arithmetic. Negative whatever x is and then plus 4. All right? So if I use that, right, which I already have, that if y is equal to negative x, there's x, plus 4. Now I have two snares. I have when x is negative 3, so I plug in negative 3. Negative, negative 3 plus 4. Negative, negative 3 is 3, plus 4 is 7, so y equals 7. So I have one solution is negative 3, 7. x, y, that works. And I also have when x is 1, so I have y equals negative 1 plus 4, which would equal 3. So the other solution is 1 comma 3. All right, so that means that here, what we have, when we look at this, we have a, this is a quadratic. This is a line. So I have a situation where those two, when I graph, would intersect at negative 3, 7 and 1, 3. So on a coordinate plane, here's 1, 3. Here's negative 3 7 would be up here right that though when i graph that's where the lines the line in the quadratic would intersect okay graphically so if i go over and graph those two like we did yesterday you're going to see depending on when you watch this it was yesterday but um, if we graph these two equations these two functions they would intersect at those points let's do one more substitution here same thing we have here a quadratic Right, um, I have a quadratic function. I have x squared plus 3x, so that's going to be a quadratic function. Here I have a linear function, a line. Do these intersect? They might not intersect. They might intersect one place. They might intersect two places. All right, so what we're going to do is solve one of these equations for x or y. Again, it makes sense. We're going to a lot of times solve for y. It makes sense to solve this one for y. So we're going to do that. That means y is equal to negative 2x plus Five. There's y. Now I sub this in to the other equation. So this goes right there for y. Sub it in there. That means we have x squared plus 3x plus, keep in mind, parentheses plus parentheses negative 2x plus 5. Now this is fine. We have a plus here, so we don't have to worry about distributing the negative. So we have x squared. Now we have 3x plus negative 2x. 3x minus 2x is x, so plus x. And then plus 5 equals 0. And now what? We try to factor. Everything's on one side equal to 0. Okay. So maybe I try to fa factors of 5 to add to 1. Factors of 5 to add to 1. Okay, it doesn't factor. So now, what might I do? Well, since everything's on one side equals zero, it makes sense to use quadratic formula. Okay, negative b. b, there is one, plus minus the square root, b squared, minus four times, times, all over, 2a. What does this equal? Negative one, plus minus, Square root, 1 squared, minus 4, 1, 5, 4 times 1 times 5, over 2. So this is negative 1 plus minus the square root of negative 19 over 2. All right? So this number right here is called, remember, it's called the discriminant, negative 19. So as soon as you see this is negative 19, sometimes I'll tell you, find the discriminant first. You're going to need this value anyway. So if you find this first and you just do the b squared minus 4ac and you get negative 19, then what that means is there's no real solution, right? So that would mean those two graphs do not intersect. No real solution, right, implies that means no intersection. All right, there's no numbers, real numbers, I can do imaginaries, but there's no real numbers, okay, that I can plug in for x and y. 
will make this equation true and at the same time make this equation true. Just keep in mind, that's also what it means to be a solution of a system, that whatever works in the top equation also works for the bottom equation. This tells me right here that there's no intersection because I have no real solution. Okay, so if that happens, you're done. You might as well get this value right away. So if you decide that you're going to use the quadratic formula, you could do the b squared minus 4ac part first. If you get a negative, you don't have to do anything else. Just write no real solution, right? There's no intersection. If you get a positive number, okay. Then you'd have the negative b in front, the 2a. You could do that and finish from there, All right? Just going back to the previous one, talk about what it, that one of the last things I said was, you know, the other thing is check your answer, you know? Let's add that on. Four, check your answer. Check your answer. If I plug in negative three and seven into my original equations, do they work? If I plug in negative three and seven, negative three and seven, do they work? All right, what's negative three squared plus negative three minus seven? What's that equal? Nine minus three minus seven. What's that equal? Nine minus three, six minus seven, negative one. And what's it need to equal? Whoops, negative one. So it works, check. And then if we plug in x, negative three, all right, plus seven. What's negative three plus seven? Four, yep, check, it works. All right, so you should check your answer as well all the time. Do the arithmetic to check, all right? So that's your substitution for nonlinear systems, okay? Process is pretty straightforward, okay? Um, here, let me give you one other way maybe we could do these. Uh, you have the option, all right? So ultimately, what we're trying to do when we're doing the substitution is we have too many kind of variables here. We can solve an equation if we have only one variable, x, right, x squared and x. We could do that. You have methods to do that. But when we have multiple variables, I can't solve this to get a value. I can only get one variable in terms of the other. I can get x in terms of y or y in terms of x. Here, y is in terms of x. Now, another option is to just solve both equations for y, right? So if I take the top equation solved for y, I'd have y equals negative x squared minus 3x. There's the top equation solved for y. The bottom equation is y equals negative 2x plus 5. I can solve the bottom equation for y. And now this is a transitive property, right? If y is equal to this and y is equal to that, then what do these two have to be? Equal. Right? So then we could just say, all right, well, if y is equal to this and y is equal to that, now that means these two have to equal each other. So negative x squared minus 3x would have to equal negative 2x plus 5. And then we can go from here. This is now quadratic equation, which we worked on solving. Add the x squared over. Make the, this a positive. Add the x squared over. Put this at the end for now. And then add 3x over. Get everything on one side. And now look what we have. This is going to be 0. Here we have x. Negative 2x plus 3x is x. And then we have x squared plus 5. So we have x squared plus x plus 5 equals 0. And you can see that this is the same place we were right here. Okay? It's essentially doing the same thing. Just a little different way to think about it. Rather than solve for y in one of the equations, then go plug in. Right? You get to there. Or you could solve both equations for y and then set the results equal, you're going to get to the same place. Okay, so those are the two options in terms of doing the substitution. All right, so check this over. Watch it. Take notes. All right, pause, rewind. All right, if you have any question or anything, make sure you make note of what uh, part in the video, what time. Okay, and then let me know. We can get together and go over it.